2023 is my 29th year in real estate. Whether buying or selling, call me. Think real estate, think Terry Williams. Call me, 865-556-4111 or 865-392-5885. Mix 105.5 is powered by Rocky Top Auto Group. Why buy at Rocky Top Auto Group? Award-winning sales and service. Lifetime warranty and two Sevier County locations. Winfield Dunn Parkway and Dolly Parton Parkway. Shop anytime at rockytopautogroup.com. Broadcasting from the new Blaylock Company studios of Mix 105.5, the Blaylock Companies, part of East Tennessee's growth since 1962. For all your road construction, ready mix, and building materials, please call 865-453-2808. 909 on the Mixed Morning Show, Jay Adams. Uh, Steve Hartford has had to leave a little early this morning, and he's going to be sad that he missed this. First of all, the statement from Ripley's Believe It or Not was true. They made that big old spam sandwich over a 1,000 pounds or whatever. So they made that out in Nebraska. Had to be, as Chase, you were saying, it had to be a Guinness World Record sort of deal. Oh, for sure. And, I mean, that's obviously a, a Nebraska thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, what else do you got to do in Nebraska? <laughs> Get some corn. That's where you yeah, <laughs> Throw some corn on top of it. It's probably, probably just fine. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was absolutely accurate. And Chase is here, as always. Good to see him. We're always happy for Chase Pipes to join us from the Relic Room inside Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Chase, because you go out and find stuff, don't you? All kinds of cool old stuff. And today you're going to get we're going to get to do something that's really unique because sometimes when people talk to us about being on the radio, some folks will talk to me and say, "Y'all still have a turntable?" And I'll have to say, "You know, about the closest thing we have to a turntable these days is a CD player, which nowadays is kind of fairly old technology." It is old. But yeah. then there's some older technology that really used to be around and was at the infancy of radio, and you found some of that old technology. So today, in our studio, an actual turntable, <laughs> and I mean hitting the way back button on this. This is not from the 1970s. No, no, no. This this is way back, way back. So we picked up a collection in Clinton, Tennessee uh, a couple months back, and it was one of the biggest antique collections we'd ever picked up. But what was so cool is, is that there were you know early phonographs within that collection. I sent the one that we have here off to a buddy of mine in South Carolina to restore. He completely restored it. We got it back. It's working. Last week we talked about you know the history of phonograph and music, but I but you know we're like, man, let's bring this in and let the people in the Sevierville County area listen to this phonograph. Yeah, this is going to be, when we play this, and we've got, this is, you've had this, as you say, restored completely. It looks in beautiful shape. The Victor Company predated the RCA Company. It would later be RCA Victor. They merged. Right. And this is, if you've seen the, uh, the speaker horn with the dog listening, listening for his master's voice, that's yep. the logo for Victor. And uh, one of the classic logos of all time and if you can find one of those rca victor dogs the dog victor that's uh that's pretty handy to find they're they're worth a lot the guy that did that he was an artist and he had done a recording of or he his the dog's master had died and he set up and just started you know playing it and the dog went over and just looked and the guy thought man that make a neat painting and he painted that and then rc developed it as their logo fantastic so what we've got here is is this is a victor 2 victor talking machine this was made in 1905 is when this was made it's really hard to get music that far back but uh, we, we've got some pretty old selections. Yeah, we're going to actually play this. This is a working thing. And, and the neat thing is this was something you could buy. You talked about this last week with us, Chase. This is something that when you purchased one of these, this was about a $10 purchase in the early 1900s, right? right yeah. I mean, it's it was a lot a, of money. Yeah, it was equivalent to, you know, five $600 today. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of money. You think about buying stereo hi-fi equipment, it would have been a big purchase. Right. Just like when, when I was a kid, it was a big deal to buy stereo. Well, think of how revolutionary this was I mean this was the first time when you know you could listen to music in your own home that was a big deal I mean this is a major technology we also talked about the fact that because it was expensive for the time spending ten dollars on something was a lot and people would buy them and it would be like the community record player yes exactly uh in uh, Kimmer, illinois a uh, buddy mine was talking she actually has the uh the collection for the town of Kimmer of, of records that would play it was a once a week thing people would come down and 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 you know listen to the the talking machine talk so what's so cool about what we're doing is 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 i i did some digging last night and as far as i know nobody has done this on the radio no he's crazy enough to do this on the radio i you know since the probably the 1940s right right and and this was the way that records would have been played on the radio what we've done is we've set this thing up in the studio now 
Don't think about it like a, a record player that you would plug into the wall because that's not how it works. Completely mechanical. No, this is hand crank. There's a little spring inside that as you crank it, it twists that spring up, and it's that tension when that spring is released that causes the turntable to spin. It's basically the same uh, type of clockwork, as you will, as a watch or a clock. You right. know, you wind it up and it works. Classic right. technology that's been around for a very long time. And then there was the recording technology that had to come along as well. You know, there were wire recordings. There were the wax uh, cylinder mm-hmm. recordings that were used early on. But then they figured out a way to press records, and that's what we have. Right. In the 1920s, that was a huge technological innovation because that required that allowed for mass production. Before then, every time they recorded a cylinder, they would have to record it live. So if, right. you know, if you wanted 10 copies, the band had to sit there and do it 10 times. Nailing it every time. I know, right? <laughs> so here's what we've got. This is our first selection. So this selection is from the Dixieland Jazz, J-A-S-S, band. This is the very first commercially produced jazz band. Band. This is uh, was recorded on February 26, 1917, in New York City at the Victor Talking Machine Company Studios at 46 and 38th Street on the 12th floor. So see, this is not only the dawn of the production of the machine on which to play these, but the same company was helping produce the content that we're going to hear right here. That's right. The very first content produced for Victor's was like classical music. And then somebody had the idea, hey, what are the kids listening to these days? What's popular? Well, this stuff they call jazz, that's pretty pretty hot. Let's do that. And this this is jazz before the term jazz was created. Yeah, they That's spelled it with S's is. instead of Z's. So this 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 song that you guys are going to listen to, this is um, called Livery Stable Blues, and this is the very first jazz album ever produced. Are you uh, ready? Livery Stable Blues right. on Mix 105.5 in full analog. Here we go. Fantastic! All right, I'm 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 pulling that one down. That's fantastic, though. You talk about something unheard in a long, long time, and at the time there was no higher fidelity than what we're hearing right now. No, I mean that was it. This is how this is how music was first broadcast on the radio. You know, radio the first radio broadcast I think it was November 6, 1920, and so you know they didn't have this this idea of you know okay. You know, let's let's put music on there. That wasn't initially what it was all about. You know, yeah. it was, you know, sports news. You know, public talks. You know, right. political discussions, things like that. But really early on, people got the idea, hey, let's put some music on here. And the first music on the radio was played live, big studios with right. big, with people. And then when they finally started printing and pressing reproductions of music, that's just like we're hearing. Right. I know this is so cool. Right. So 
All right, I've got another song. Right. So this one is by. So this is more of what people. What was real fascinating about this collection is, is that you know this is an East Tennessee collection. So it was a real snapshot of you know what people were listening to in the area. This album was in in this collection. Radio DJs would often talk on the air in the early days about the latest, the hottest music that was out, and this was the only music that was out. The pickings were pretty slim in those days, but it right. was whatever was produced locally was pretty popular, oftentimes as well. Well, and like we were talking about the very first records produced were classical you know right. edison and you know the early victor folks they were like you know well they'll they'll like what we like let's sure. put out classical music it was the classics popular music didn't come about until you know the teens and early 20s so this one is by jesse coat it's called the virginia moonshiner now what's interesting about this song is is that it was first recorded in august of 1929 in richmond indiana so it's got some yodels in it. Yodeling was really popular, given out by Jimmy Rogers and all those guys. Right. Um, so what they would do is they would send people all over the United States looking for bands who were popular in these areas and recording it and see which which was popular. And this is one that was really popular. Yeah, there are there are TV episodes and things where you can see people doing that. There's an Andy Griffith episode where they go out looking for talent. A guy shows up in Mayberry with a, a recorder and a microphone and lets people play to record and they made records that way because they were they were populating what people were going to be listening to on the radio. And some of these songs were so popular that the, that later music even re-recorded them. So this one, really cool, was re-recorded by Johnny Cash in his Folsom Prison album. Wow. So he plays this in there. If you listen to that, you'll hear this exact song. So there you go. Are we ready? Yeah, absolutely. All right, here's something a little local from East Tennessee that would have been popular in the 1920s and 30s. Here we go. Moonshiner team, go figure. <laughs> there goes the needle down. Fantastic. Now, so that was recut later. That was clearly not the Johnny Cash version, but I got to say, pretty good fidelity. You could understand what was being sung about there. That thing sounds pretty good. Oh, for sure. And keep in mind, this is popular music. So what was going on in the 20s during this time when this was recorded in 1929? You still had Prohibition. Right. So, you know, any any songs about, you know, alcohol or liquor or anything like that was wildly popular. You could also hear in there some of the same licks that we hear bluegrass players playing nowadays. The walk downs, the tremolo on the uh, mandolin that's yep. played there. Very common still in bluegrass music today, that traditional bluegrass sound. Yeah, and it was just after this is when bluegrass actually starts to separate out into its own genre of music. You know, this is... The, the, this this is like I said. This was recorded in Indiana from right. the guy that played, you know, just locally there in Indiana. Right. So you know, this was popular music in that 
in that small area. And that's what, you know, it's like the Bristol sessions, you know, with the Carter yeah. family and all that. You know, A.P. Carter, what he did is is he would travel all over East Tennessee, Southwest Virginia, uh, Western North Carolina, looking for these old songs and old melodies and tunes that people hadn't heard before, or played before, and recording it live for the first time. Yeah, the the Carter family fold up there in Virginia is uh, still preserving that old music, old time music. So just fantastic. And again, what you're hearing is an a Victor record player. From days of old. And one of the interesting things, Chase is cranking it up again to give it more power so it can power through another song. And the volume control is through the needle. There's no there's no crank the volume. I can adjust the volume on the microphone. We've got a microphone on the horn. But the, the player itself has no volume control. The needle is the volume control. Yeah, and I think that has to do with the density of the steel that the needle's made out of. Sure. I think. Uh, don't quote me on that. But, yeah, they, you, know, you could have it soft, medium, or loud. And you can get three separate needles for that, depending on the amount of people or the venue that you're at. And we start to see somewhat of a disposable society coming forward, because how long would a needle last? Ten songs. That's what was so crazy. Is it, What was wild is I went to get needles for it, and you know, I looked online, and it's like, oh, a hundred pack of needles? This will last me a lifetime. Or? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you could really tell a difference. After about ten songs, you're like, oh man, we need to change that. So you change the needle out, and it's like, oh wow, now it works a lot better. Brilliant design. Just keep them coming back for more. Yeah, but what was cool is, is, is you know, people as the music styles changed as it grew over time, you know, people still kept these, the, the, you know, these Victor talking machines, and of course they evolved into different models. I mean, they were literally hundreds of different models of these right. over time. Right. You know, this Victor two, this was the first, you know, the, the kind of the very first mass produced. Victor machine that would have been in the home. And it's relatively portable. You, you'll be able to maybe see this on an upcoming uh, episode of Chasing History online on YouTube, but uh, you can you can see that this thing sits on a tabletop. Some had cabinets that mm-hmm. they sat on top of. It were bigger machines. But this is, a, this is basically like somewhat portable. Now, the horn is about as big as the player, really. Oh, yeah, the horn's the biggest part of it. Yeah. And the horns get a lot bigger depending on, you know, the audience that you want. Is that that is the original horn that yeah. came with this player? Yeah, it's this in is, fantastic shape. I know, right? Yeah. I mean, the bottom was bent up a little bit, but I fixed it up on my anvil and straightened it up a little bit, and it worked. It, it works phenomenal. So uh, we are going to do an episode of Chasing History with the, my buddy that restored this stuff. We've Nate. we've got two more. We've got a sil- two cylinder machines, Nate. which predate these, which go back to the 1800s that we're gonna we're gonna restore. So I've got one more song if we've got time. Absolutely, we got time. We got, we got, All we're, right. we're playing now, the hits. You kidding me? That's right. <laughs> And this is a huge, huge hit, and I think a lot of you guys uh, out there will probably recognize this song. I'm sure there's there's people in this area still alive when this song was was popular. I hope that your friend and mine, John Oxford, is listening because he is <laughs> he has put forward many, many times before that we should do a special show that features some of the types of music that you're just about ready to play right All now. All right. So in the night, late mid to late 1930s, of course, music style changes, and the big popular music today was big band these right. big band orchestras and this is a popular tune from 1944 by the glenn miller band probably their most recognizable tune called in the mood let's get in the mood here on mix 105.5 here it comes Thank you. 
For your dining and dancing pleasure, the Glenn Miller Orchestra on Tennessee's New Mix 105.5 on the Victor 2. That's all right. Fantastic. That's really, really neat. Well, what's so cool is, is, is seriously, this is probably the first time on radio anywhere in the United States that this has been done in, you know, 70, 80 years. Exactly. I mean, this, this is radio history. This was high fidelity before high fidelity was a term. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We didn't even know what high fidelity would be at that point. But this was this had to seem magical, especially to people who were older when this technology came oh, out. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's magical to us today. I mean, man, I am nerding out hard. Like, this is the <laughs> Coolest thing that I've done all year. Like, I'm so excited. It's far from being the oldest thing you've ever found for the Relic Room, but it's one of the neatest for sure. No, it is. And, I, and, and you know, I hope you guys out there really enjoyed this. We wanted to do something special and bring some, you know, interesting music to you guys. And, you know, this is just keep in mind, you know, this, this is what your. Your grandparents and great grandparents. This is the songs that they had to listen to on the machine that they had to listen to it on. That song from Glenn Miller. If you were if you were in a community that allowed for dancing, you'd be on the dance floor with Glenn oh, Miller. Oh yeah, that's all right. Well, it's like the jazz. You know, yeah. that was that was the devil's music. But don't don't be caught playing that jazz. One of the precursors to rock and roll and the uniquely American music form. Yep, jazz. that's right. Fantastic. Yeah. So if you want to see some of this information, check out Chasing History. You can check out Chasing History podcast where you can hear some of these anywhere you get podcasts. So check that out for audio. And then for video Chasing History episodes, go to YouTube and check out the Chasing History channel there. You'll like that a lot. And if you want to check out all the kind of things that Chase finds on his journeys, head over to the Relic Room inside Smoky Mountain Knife Works, Highway 66 in Sevierville, right there on the banks of the French Broad River. Chase, always a pleasure. This has been a real treat. This oh, time. man, this is been the best thing I've done. Remember, guys, history rocks. woo It rocks and rolls. 931 on the Mix Morning Show. Thanks to Chase Pipes, and thanks for listening this morning on Tennessee's New Mix 105.5. Sevier County Emergency 911 urges you to stay safe and informed by signing up for Code Red. Code Red is a free service that keeps you prepared for any emergency, wherever you are. Code Red provides critical alerts about emergency events, evacuations, severe weather, and natural disasters. Receive notifications by phone, email, and text. Register now by texting SEVERE ALERTS to 99411 or go to SevereCountyTN.gov. Dollywood Parks and Resorts is hiring weekday and weekend positions for our upcoming Christmas season. Working with us entitles you to exclusive perks like our on-site health care center, bonus pay, free lunches, and more. Plus, it's a great way to earn premium pay for the holiday season or even start your full-time career. Visit DollywoodJobs.com to see all of our available positions or ask a question by clicking the Ask a Dollywood Representative button. Join our Dollywood family today. The Dollywood Company is an equal opportunity employer. Don't miss the purple deals going on now at Foothills Furniture to support Alzheimer's Tennessee. There are purple bows on special deals where a portion of your purchase will support our team at the Smoky Mountain Walk in October. The Foothills Furniture crew has also decided to clear out the clearance center by making crazy deals on lots of items. Don't miss the deals and an opportunity to support a cause close to our hearts. Foothills Furniture is open Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 and Saturday from 10 to 4 at 2509 Newport Highway in Sevierville. Visit us on Facebook. Give us a call at 865 865- 5429-8400 or visit our website at foothillsfurniture.net. Hey, did you know your car may be worth more than you think? Rocky Top Ford is buying cars. You've seen the ads from those national companies who want you to buy a car, but is that really your best offer? Your car may be worth more than you think at Rocky Top. Stop by, give us 10 minutes, we'll give you an appraisal. If you want to sell, we'll hand you a check. It's that easy. Rocky Top Ford, where your car is really worth more than you think. Shop online at RockyTopFord.com. Since 1962, Charles Blaylock & Sons made a lifetime commitment to build our roadways with excellence and a dedication to preserving the beauty of our Smoky Mountain heritage. The legacy of Charles Blaylock has been passed down to each generation, and they continue to provide East Tennessee with the service, experience, and hard work that our customers come to expect. From road building and bridge work to paving a driveway, we strive to meet our customers' expectations safely and efficiently. Call Charles Blaylock & Sons for your free estimate at 453 Two eight zero eight. The red neck and the red coat. Weekday mornings from six until ten on Tennessee's new mix one oh five point five.